Hello everyone, I am Rob the Robot from the Adobe Education Team and I would like to welcome you to the Inject Creativity Live Show. This is an online show for educators interested in digital creativity. This show is live on the Adobe for Education YouTube channel as well as other social media and past recordings can be viewed via bit.ly slash adobe dash inject. Any teacher, whether an Adobe user or not, in any K-12 or higher education sector and any subject area, is welcome. Here are your hosts, Dr. Tim Kitchen and Erin Wraithke. Thanks, Rob, and welcome to this pre-Adobe Max version of the Inject Creativity Live Show, the online show that aims to inspire teachers to enhance digital creativity for themselves and their students in all curriculum areas. Welcome, Erin. Hi, Tim, and a special welcome to everyone who's joined us live for this show being recorded on Wednesday, the 20th of October, 2021, via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel, as well as the Australasian Adobe and Education Facebook group. We encourage you to say hi in the chat and let us know where you are from and where you teach. While you're in the chat sharing a bit about yourself, we'd like to do an acknowledgement of country. We respect and honour Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander elders past, present and future, as well as all Indigenous people from the lands we reach out to during this event. We acknowledge their stories, traditions and living cultures. We acknowledge them as the first peoples in our lands, the first scientists and the first creatives, and we commit to building a brighter future together. Well, during this episode, we'll be doing a promo for next week's Adobe Max conference. Adobe Max is the largest creativity conference on the planet and it's happening over three days next week. We'll be hearing from special guest and New South Wales Adobe Education Leader, Brett Salakis. Michelle Dennis, the head of digital at Halebury College, will be back with us as our thought leader. Dom Trainer, the Adobe Education Evangelist for Europe, will be sharing about a special climate change workshop opportunity with Adobe Spark. We will be introducing a new free and online professional learning program for teachers starting next month. We'll be sharing the October edition of the Australasian Adobe in Education Update and Newsletter. And our behind the scenes guru, Adobe Customer Success Manager, Jerry Wong, will have a special quiz question for us. And we're also going to have a special guest appearance from Adobe Master Teacher, Juliet Bentley, at various times during the show. Oh, there she is there. That was that was quicker than I expected. Hello, Juliet. <laughs> Good. It's nice to see you. Uh, it's great to have you with us. Thank you. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. All right, let's have a look who's putting comments in the chat already. Wow, all the way from Egypt. Let's bring up that wow. comment there, Jerry, if you can. Good morning from Egypt. And I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce the name. I know I'll get it wrong, but good morning. Or if it's uh, if it's good morning, I'll say marhaba um, kif halik, alhamdulillah. There you go. I'll speak a little bit of Arabic for you. Hopefully that was somewhere close to right. <laughs> it's good to have you. Thank you for joining us. I should say shukran for joining us. Thank you. And uh, it looks like Ben's joined us as well. Ben's from mm -hmm. the border of Victoria and New South Wales, and he's a regular on the show. It's lovely to have you. I won't greet you in Arabic, Ben. I'll just say g'day, like you're saying g'day from the border, and he's encouraging us all to be well. And look who's here, Erin. Look who else has joined us. Yes, Who's our that? faithful Timothy Cosgrove, all the way from Toronto at 3.33 a.m. What a champion. And this is where we often say, let's bring Juliet up to the stage as well. Thanks, Jerry. This is where we often say to Tim, you are allowed to sleep at this time, but we do really appreciate you being with us. Absolutely. And it's a good Juliet, scene. What an inspiration Tim is to all those other teachers who have decided that this time is not great for them to be watching live. Come on, what's wrong with you? This is the best time to be watching live. He can do it. It's inspirational. He's so <laughs> wonderful and he's always here. It's, it's fantastic. And uh, Juliet, we've also got another Adobe mm -hmm. Education leader who's joined us as well. Bring up Bronwyn's comment there. Bronwyn, Bronwyn, Dr. Bronwyn Wade Lee, who from Macquarie University, has joined us. Nice to see you with us. 
And uh, but but here, I'll, I'll, I'll have a go at her first name because that looks good. As just yes. saying, that she's joining us from LinkedIn. So shukran bahia. I hope you enjoy the show. All right, inshallah, you'll enjoy the show. That's that's what I'm going to say, and I'm going to stick with that, and I'm not going to do any yeah. more Arabic. I'm endlessly that. impressed, though, Tim. Very, very impressed. <laughs> mm. All right, uh, I've got to get myself working here. Let's hear from Rob before we go any further. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raifke. Thanks, Rob. Now, let's welcome our good friend and the Inject Creativity Live moderator and techie whiz, Jerry Wong. Hi, Jerry. Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'll be looking out for your comments and questions in the chat and posting the most relevant ones. To encourage you to use the live chat, I have an Adobe-related quiz question for you. Name one of the Australian Adobe education leaders who is presenting at Adobe Max this year. All right, let's bring that up as a ticker in case that disappears. So in the chat, can you do that? Can you name one of the two Adobe education leaders from Australia? While we're waiting for a response, I just want to share the comment that Michelle Dennis made saying how impressed she is, Tim, because the only languages she can speak are programming ones. Well, I'm impressed by that. <laughs> that's, that's very good. <laughs> okay. Oh, we've got a response. Oh, okay. I think or Craig has got that too. And in fact, we've got Tim, Tim beat her, I think. Let's go. Timothy Cosgrove, you were in there first. Juliet Bentley is definitely a correct dancer. So let's give Tim a round of applause. And then pretty much straight after Tim mentioned, then uh, we have Ben's response as well. And Jerry, I'll get you to bring up Ben's response because he brought up the other Adobe education leader. That was a bit of good luck. Yeah. <laughs> but equal coverage. I think I think he must have just hit enter a fraction of a second after Tim, Ben. Thank you very much. Well done. Now uh, let's bring up Juliet to the stage too, because it's pretty impressive, Juliet. This is the second time that you have been representing this part of the world at Adobe Max. So we're going to find out what you're going to be doing later. But tell us what's it like to actually be involved in Adobe Max. I think one of the best things has been being able to work directly with people like Brian Johnsrund and um, Matt. I think that's been phenomenal. And Magda Goss, you're actually getting a chance to to work with people who, who are at the top of the, the pile, really, in lots of ways. Um, and just sharing what we're doing, I think, is really important. And showing that just, you know, a, a, a simple classroom teacher can still have some reach. And I think that mm -hmm. we underestimate that a lot. Because I'm not doing anything special. I'm just doing what we can do. And if I can do it, anybody can. And it's amazing. And you've been inspiring teachers for, for many years now, Juliet. And with Adobe Max, traditionally, it's a fifteen to 20,000 people in one location in Los Angeles. And then we watch the recordings later on, although it has been live to air at that time, but usually like in the middle of the night for us. But last year, it went over three time zones as it's happening mm. again this year. And from what I gather last year, it had over five million people watching Wow. The, at least the keynotes and, and some of the bigger parts of it. So it's a massive audience. And that's why mm -hmm. they're declaring it is the largest creativity conference on the planet. And it's happening next week. And I guess that's one of the, it's one of the really great things to come out of this massive change in the new normal that we've got is the accessibility of these conferences and these events yeah. to people from across the world. So that, you know, if you're from an area or a location or a circumstance where just travel just is never going to be an option, you also can share in this amazing conference. And, and it's really Jerry's interesting. Yeah, sorry, just, I was about to say, it's interesting to be able to see the number of people already signed up for a session that's a week out. So we've mm -hmm. got, I think, 800 people just for the session that I'm, I'm in. Wow, which is that's amazing. Awesome. That, that's, that's crazy. So, that's yeah. a very, very good size auditorium. <laughs> but, uh, but Jerry, Jerry's a bit disappointed though. He's he's been to two actual Max events and he can't wait for it to happen back again in, in Los Angeles. I'm not sure if it will, Jerry. From five just million... gonna have to wait. Yeah, <laughs> who knows what's gonna happen in the future. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Thanks, Rob. Let's meet our guests for this episode and let's welcome Brett and Michelle to the stage. 
Now, right. Brett, you are well known as one of the founders of Hashtag Aussie Ed, but I've recently noticed that you've joined HP as their education mm. ambassador. Tell us a little bit about this new role. Yes, yes. Um, well, firstly, thank you so much for letting me come and join you today. And I'm very fortunate. I think I've been with you a few times now, and, and I always love coming because I'm very passionate about ed tech and, and very passionate about sharing uh, good quality good quality digital pedagogy and the best part is that's all oh, that way that's exactly what this new job is all about i'm going to be working with uh hp as the education ambassador across australia and my whole role is to champion good digital pedagogy and help teachers help schools help systems make sure that the uh devices that they purchase the the machines the hardware that they put into the classroom get used to the the maximum of their potential and uh, the, we, we improve teaching and learning. And as an end result, our students are beneficiaries of all of that work and, and, and they get to learn uh, more effectively, be more engaged and, and, and have a great time at school. What so a great opportunity. It's <laughs> so cool. Congratulations. And of course, I don't think you would have got the job if you weren't an Adobe education leader. I'm just putting that out there. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. There you go. I did, I did slip in the interview that I was, I was good friends with uh, Dr. Tim Kitchen and, and I think they got me over the line. Mm. Just a little listen. bit of a name. <laughs> now, Michelle, welcome back to the show. You're, you're almost a regular now. You've been many episodes over this year, which has been fantastic. Tell us about your role, for those who haven't met you, your role at Halebury College. Uh, I'm head of digital at Halebury, which um, is the biggest school in Australia, which means I get to float around across 4,000 students, brainwashing them with technology. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's a great fun role. I'm really enjoying it. Oh, it's a huge cohort as well for you to be able, you know, thinking about and planning for and trying to get like, you know, great outcomes for. So I, I'm, I'm sure that they are very aware of how lucky they are to have you. Oh, I'm, I'm lucky to work in this environment. It's a place where things are always changing, which um, if, you know, given that I love tech, I love change as well. Change is good. Oh, I'm sure, Michelle, you wouldn't have got the job if you weren't an Adobe education leader too. I'm just saying. Oh, that was definitely <laughs> that was definitely a name drop from me too. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Brett, can you tell us something interesting about yourself that not many people would know? Oh, well, former male model. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's not fair when I say that. Always someone laughs. Timmy, you laughed at it. What? There's nothing, there's nothing silly about that. Well, I tell you what, I will say, um, proud dad moment this week. My my son, who's doing his HSC, his final year of studies, um, just signed a uh, professional contract with a, a rugby union club up here. So he is going to uh, be a professional footballer as well as hopefully get into university and and get along with his studies. I've always, oh, I tell you yeah. what, I've always been. I've always used the phrase. I, I tried to do this. Uh, this is how I try and live as as a man, and how I've tried to raise my children. But um. I want my boys, I mean, Tim knows I've got five kids, but um, I've always tried to raise my boys to be renaissance men. I want them equally comfortable um, running and playing hard rugby and uh, football in one hand and, uh, and, and and looking at art and reading poetry and and, and that gentle and kindness at, 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 at the same time. So uh, I think I've always wanted my children to invoke that renaissance sort of spirit mm. and I'm, I'm very glad that he's trying very hard to get a high ATAR and get into a, a bit of a difficult course and at the same time busting heads and, and kicking butt at rugby too. So uh, beautiful. So proud dad moment as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And it sounds like your multi-dimensionality modelling has been rubbing off quite successfully on him. Congratulations. Round of applause. <laughs> hey, Michelle, how about you? What's something interesting that not many people would know about you? Well, um, it, Everyone who knows me knows I'm into tech. Um, and the, in fact, some of the students at school started calling me uh, Robo Dennis um, in the um, schoolyard, which I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um, but actually, one of my hobbies is getting um, actually away and off the grid. So I hiked to Everest Base Camp a few years ago, um, completely without electricity for a good 12 days of the hike. Um, yeah, so I, do, I, I actually like running away from tech as well. Nice. 
Erin, you got something to ask? Brett? Well, I think you know, as much as like I'm a tech aficionado too, and as much as it is fun, it's also really, really good and healthy to unplug. Absolutely. And I think it's a strong message for uh, students as well in terms of creating balance, particularly mm. when we have beams on the screens yes. so much. So, Brett, tell it's us what. Creating space for interactions. Brett, what will you be sharing today? Oh, um, I'm going to be sharing. Do you know what? I'm, I'm actually going to trickle in a little bit of virtual reality to uh, get the, the creative juices flowing. I know uh, Adobe are great supporters of creativity. And then I'm going to, once we've, we've sparked that creativity, I'm going to use Adobe Spark um, to, to show how to uh, um, deepen and enrich uh, writing uh, and get that beautiful language within uh, like narrative writing or, or whatever you might be writing, whatever genre you might have your students writing. So um, I'm excited to share a, a cool little creative fun tool. Lovely. Fantastic. And Michelle, what will you be sharing with us later in this episode? Well, one of my passions is trying to get more girls involved in um, the career of uh, technology, whatever aspect of that from data to virtual reality. So I'm going to share some ideas for how you can uh, get the girls in your school more engaged in tech um, because it is really important that we try and make sure that all of our students have the opportunity to take part in um, that industry that's changing the world. Mm. Terrific. Well, folks, we're really looking forward to hearing from both of you later on in the show. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. You may have already noticed that uh, Brett and Michelle are both members of the Adobe Education, the AEL community, Adobe Education Leaders community. This is the highest level of Adobe's education community programs. And it's a very exclusive club with only 64 teachers qualifying in the Australasian region. Adobe Education Leaders are active members of the Adobe Education Exchange and are very passionate about using Adobe applications to enhance digital literacy, communication and creativity skills in schools and universities. They regularly share their passion with a network of educators wider than their own school or faculty and help support the work of the Adobe and education teams around the globe. If you're interested in becoming an AEL, the first step is to do the Adobe Creative Educator Program and get your ACE Level 1 and 2 badges via adobe.ly forward slash ACE. When you've been part of the ACE program and shown that you have a wider network of educators than just your school, you could be in line to be nominated to be an AEL. It's well worth the effort if you're keen to be inspired by an international network of creative educators, connect directly with and support the Adobe education team and run professional learning for your network with free Adobe software and merchandise. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Thanks, Rob. Well, Erin, I'm really excited to introduce a new live online professional learning opportunity from Adobe that will be starting on the 10th of November and scheduled throughout 2022. I think we need a drum roll and together we can announce the name of this new program. Here comes the drum roll. Adobe, Adobe Teach, Teach Me. <laughs> I think that might have worked. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Tim has put together this special video promotion for the new Adobe Teach Meets program. The Adobe Teach Meets program is a set of free and online creative professional learning opportunities for teachers in any subject area and any level who have access to Adobe applications. Each Teach Meet session involves a choice of online practical workshops, both for teachers who are new to Adobe and those who are experienced users. Each workshop is led by an Adobe education leader who is a practicing classroom, primary, secondary or higher education teacher, or they're led by members of the Adobe education team. All of these leaders are passionate about enhancing students' digital literacy, communication and creativity skills. Each Teach Meet session will run for two consecutive afternoon evenings, twice a term throughout 2022, starting at 4 p.m. Melbourne, Sydney time. The sessions are not recorded, 
they are live workshops with links to key practical resources and how-to guides for follow-up. Registration in advance is required. Any teacher who has access to Adobe Tools will benefit from the Adobe Teach Meets program. So look up adobe.ly slash teachmeets or scan this QR code to find out more and register for the sessions you would like to attend. Let all your colleagues know about this free online and creative professional learning opportunity from Adobe. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Well, as we mentioned earlier, Adobe Max, the world's biggest creativity conference, is happening next week and it has a special track for educators. It does. Uh, being a virtual event and running over various time zones, there's nothing stopping you registering and getting involved via max.adobe.com. So the opening keynote session for our time zone is happening next Tuesday at 12 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time. Watch it during your lunch break with your students, with your colleagues, and if you can't watch it live, you can always watch the recording via the Adobe Creative Cloud YouTube channel. Adobe Max is when Adobe announces new products and new features to current products and the very popular sneaks segment where they reveal potential new products and features. Look up max.adobe.com forward slash sessions forward slash educators to find out more and register for the Adobe Max education track. Erin, keep reading. You're doing such a good job. <laughs> this year we have a strong APAC connection where our very own Juliet Bentley, Craig Delmeyer Power and Dr. Tim Kitchen will all be presenting, as well as Sarah Madison, the Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Swinburne University. Juliet will be sharing a session on Wednesday the 27th, next Wednesday, next week, at 9 o'clock in the morning Australian Eastern Daylight Time, titled Fostering Digital Literacy in the K-12 Creative Classroom. On Thursday next week at 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time, Craig and I will be collaborating with AEL master teacher Lisa Godfried from New Technology High School in California. We will be doing a session titled Giving Students a Voice with Character Animator. And at 4.30 p.m. that same day, Professor Sarah Madison, as well as Do Dr. Cla uh, was Associate Professor, isn't she? Yeah, Associate Professor mm -hmm. Claire Dyson from Swinburne will be presenting uh, the topic Transforming Education with Creative and Digital Skills. Go to max.adobe.com to register so that you don't miss out on this essential annual digital creativity conference. Hi, folks. Hi, folks. We are about to be inspired by an AEL, an Adobe education leader. AELs are passionate about the use of Adobe tools to inspire creative learning and teaching experiences in the delivery of either primary, secondary or post-secondary curricula. The first step to becoming an AEL is to be an ACE, an Adobe Creative Educator, via edX.adobe.com slash adobe-creative-educator. You don't have to be an Adobe expert to be an ACE, just a teacher interested in engaging students through creative digital learning experiences. The ACE program is a free international micro-credentialing program. It only takes a few hours to earn your level one badge and the focus is on creativity rather than Adobe. Please share this program with your colleagues and get involved. Who knows, you may one day also become an Adobe education leader. And it's a delight to welcome Adobe Education Leader and now Education Ambassador for Hewlett Packard, Brett Salakis to the show. Over to you, Brett. Hey, fantastic, fantastic. Look, um, I'm going to begin with a uh, a little a little uh, inspiration, just like I would uh, with a class. So I'm going to ask. I'm just going to change screens. Um, Tim, can you tell me? Can you guys uh, see my screen? I'm going to assume you can now. Looking you can. Good. Yep, thank you. I'm going to assume that you can see the, the, the screen there. What I'd love you to be able to do is just go to that website that uh, I, I've got up there at the moment, salakas.com uh, slash spooky. 
Uh, and you just use your phone, uh, and it's actually going to take you to a little virtual reality uh, page that I've got set up. So uh, I use this quite a lot to kick off lessons, um, just to be able to have virtual reality um, provide students experiences that they might otherwise not be able to have. So uh, use your phone for me. Um, go to uh, salakas.com, uh, sorry, salakas.me slash spooky, because I can't talk and type at the same time. Spooky. And I'm going to have a little bit of a spooky lesson for you because we're coming into Halloween. Uh, now, I've got here uh, a 360-degree uh, image, so 360 cities. It's a great tool. It has images from cities and uh, important locations from around the world. Uh, you just need to. So uh, I don't know if you can see me at the moment, but I'm certainly having a look. This is actually a cemetery, as you can probably tell, in Bath in the UK. Uh, but we've we've got some a bit of a, uh, a a dark, mysterious feel there. Uh, and what I would definitely do there is have a bit of a brainstorm session with my students. What are some words that come up? Some describing words that you you would come up with um, to describe how you feel looking around that place. Now, the power of virtual reality is that we get to give students experiences that they otherwise not, would not be able to have. So we can take them to a, a cemetery on the other side of the planet over in the UK in Bath and, and give them, let's draw out some language here. So I would love to probably use something like a, um, a Slido or, or, or a similar tool to actually have a digital brainstorming session. And then I'd be... Uh, picking out the types of language that I would love to see the students use in their writing because this is actually an introduction to a writing task. So my writing task that I'm going to demonstrate right now uh, is actually to give life to written assignments. Uh, and what I've done in my Adobe Spark, I have a couple of slides here where I have an image on one side and then I'm going to have my students just click the text box on the other and we're going to come up with some uh, some descriptive languages, uh, just descriptive sentences. Now, the whole point here is instead of just setting my students off on a creative writing task without scaffolding, I'm going to scaffold the types of language that I want. So I want them to be particularly descriptive. I want them not to rush into the telling of the story. So often when we say, let's write a narrative, we've got to really... We've got a very bad habit um, as educators to say there's a, a very clear structure and formula. So we, we're going to do an orientation. We're going to set the complication. We're going to have a series of events and we're going to write a resolution. And, and what that does is it makes the students rush into first this, then this, then this, to begin to end with this, and, and we resolve. But we, we lose the beauty of writing. So we, we trying to, as, as a lot of people here, and I think the last time I was on um, this session with you, Tim and Erin, I actually spoke about poetry and, and using poetic devices. And I'm very passionate about uh, branching out and, and, and supporting that, that gorgeous language. We have this such a rich, um, lovely language, and we have a nuanced vocabulary that students don't often get to use. So we've had a virtual reality session. We have then scaffolded uh, the vocabulary and the sentence structures that we want. So I would have students come up with lots of words. So at first, they probably would use uh, adjectives to describe dark, gloomy, spooky, scary. But then we can start to maybe draw out some simile or some metaphor as dark as this, as, as dangerous as this, as cold as something else. So we can start to draw out those the, the, more complex uh, poetic devices, those more complex uh, language features. And here we would do exactly the same. So I might have my students, and this is the, the beautiful part about Adobe Spark, is that as I have my students start to write, 
it will have a nice big thick font and as they put in a couple of sentence sentences it will resize so that even i could have a full paragraph just on this one uh, first slide so i might have um i've got here the house so i i, I say i might say uh the old brick house stood straight and tall uh, the darkened the darkened uh, stone bricks uh, held up ancient walls. And that might be how I, oh, if I could spell that would be great. Thank goodness for Grammarly. Um, so we we, uh, we start there. I've got a couple of sentences. And then I could flesh that out and I might model that. But then you see I've deliberately got my next second and third slide. I've actually got then, now I've got a focused in image of an old window frame and some, you know, paint peeling off bricks. So, so probably do the same thing. I'd have them say the glass was framed by splintered wood paint peeled off the off the bricks uh there were chips as if a workman had been chiseling away for thousands of years so i've i, I start bringing up the, this beautiful language and i've got these visual supports uh to be able to allow the students to write what they are seeing uh so i've got this scaffold there and and then i might even bring bring in and i might even have a sentence start so suddenly uh, I should have a comma there. Uh, suddenly, I saw a face looking at me through the window. So now I can describe the face, a, a man uh, with a shadow ho hiding part of his face, uh, short stubbly hair across his beard and moustache, uh, you know, pale tight lips, uh, eyes that stared like cold steel straight ahead. So I, I've got these, these these beautiful things. And suddenly I've got three paragraphs of writing before the students have even begun telling me the story. So I've got this whole spooky Halloween-y themed story. Normally they'd be straight into this happened, then this happened, witches came, pumpkin came to life, boom, 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 this, 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 the end, uh, I survived. But instead, by having the scaffolded slides here, and by beginning with this descriptive experience of uh, integrating virtual reality, we've been able to draw up much richer language. So, look, that's what I wanted to share with you. I'm going to uh, jump back. Uh, look, that's that's what I wanted to, to share with you. But look, uh, I, I hope that made a little bit of sense. I hope that uh, that that simple integration of a tool, a free tool like uh, 360 Cities, where you can just grab and take students to anywhere in the world, uh, gives them an experience. You can then draw out the language you want and then actually be able to, uh, you know, scaffold that, that that's such uh, beautiful uh, writing. So there you go. Thanks, Brett. Really cool, yeah. We've got some very kind comments, a lot of them from Juliet, who's just joined us on the screen. I thought I'd bring you up, Juliet, without warning you. Um, Thank you for that, yeah. <laughs> in fact, Julia, let's have a look at one of the comments uh, you mentioned here. I'll get you to read it out and maybe discuss it a little bit. Sure. Spark allows for visual literacy to support the written text, but best yet, having the students add their dramatic reading with thematic music softly in the background actually draws together so many elements and so many skills that we want our students to, to have. You can hear the dog in the background. I'm terribly I can, sorry. I can. I can. That's, a pup, that's my puppy smile. <laughs> yeah, I'm terribly sorry. Um, no, never apologize. It's, it's, it's it's, yeah. Um, yes, I think it's. I think it's an absolutely key thing to do. And great, you you did that beautifully. But I'm finding that when I do this with my students, they get such a kick out of having a professional looking piece with the images so beautifully chosen, and that they can actually focus in on particular bits of it. And then adding their voices and learning about that dramatic reading and modulation. I think I just think it's a fantastic tool. And of course, I'm slightly biased because I use it all the time. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. And yeah. and interestingly, I was even thinking while you were doing your presentation, Brett. Um, further on from the comment that Juliet just that Juliet just made. 
there I was, that, um, you know, students could even explore, you know, some basics of, you know, voiceover and, you know, language presentation and even like um, basic Foley artist work where they could, you know, create crackling mm. thunder sounds using the microphone within Adobe Spark video to add that bit of context and um, texture to their presentation, which is really interesting. And the there's the other... Oh, go, oh, no, Julia, sorry. Sorry, I was just about to say, the other thing that I think is particularly wonderful about the video is that you, they, you know, if they stuff up, they've only got a 29 second bit to redo rather than what tends to happen, which is they do a, a, a shot to camera or they do a piece of text or whatever, and it's a long piece. They stuff it up somewhere and they've got to repeat the whole lot. This way, they only have small bits to do, and that makes life so much easier for them. And, and it teaches them for pacing. Us. Yeah, well, it does. Do you know, do you know what, Juliet? Like you, you, you brought up exactly why I love this technique. And you know, one of the things I learned as a, as a, certainly as a rugby coach, but but also as a teacher, that that whole part whole um, system where you you show people what everything looks like, then you break it up into small manageable chunks and allow mm. them to have the the whole experience. So one of the good elements of Adobe Spark is we, we, we can give a student the whole experience of a narrative, a whole written piece, mm. but what it allows us then to do is scaffold into small manageable chunks. Let's describe this, what's happening here, what's happening here, and suddenly, exactly like you say, we only need to give feedback on one or two chunks. It's not overwhelming for the child. We give very explicit, direct instruction. We're, we're scaffolding their language, and before they know it, they actually have a beautiful whole piece of writing uh, um, done and something that I'm, I'm big on having learning artifacts. I love the concept of a learning mm -hmm. artifact. And, and that's probably one of the things that I, I haven't ever spoke about on, on this show, Tim, but it's one of the things that I use Adobe Spark for probably the most is actually capturing what students have learned and being able to showcase that to, to an authentic audience. I love having an authentic audience, even if that is just let's send that video home to mum and dad or let's showcase that across the grade or whatever it might be. But, look, great tool. I hope everyone had a... Um, uh, a little bit of uh, inspiration, not only with the virtual reality, but with the tool. And I thought something a little bit uh, thematically spooky as we run into Halloween. That's Wonderful. Great. And uh, just notice, let's so bring up ja uh, Jazz Wanth's comment here. Can we make video editing more easy? And I think Michelle's responding here. I'll just bring up Michelle. In fact, Michelle, I'm going to bring you up to the stage. <laughs> there you are. Michelle, how would you respond to, to that about making video a little bit easier? Well, I actually would use Adobe Spark Video as my first step of introducing video editing um, because it does chunk it and it's very, very simple. But when you start really wanting to get into video editing and go a little bit further than that, Adobe Premiere Rush, I've been able to teach very young kids how to use it. Um, and because it works on a mobile phone as well, it means that they can actually start yeah. editing it out in the field while they're still putting their film together um, and then come back to the um, computer and continue editing it. So um, mm. I just find it so easy to mm. use compared to Premiere Pro. It's so true. In fact, um, I often say that to Spark Video is the simplest way to make a video story, a quality video story. Rush is a step up from Spark Video but nowhere near as complicated as the ultimate solution, which is Adobe Premiere Pro, which is used at the highest level of the multimedia industry. In fact, Marvel Studios will regularly use Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects to make their blockbuster films. And your students have access to it. Most of them do anyway, which is just awesome to think. There's no limit to what they can do with Adobe tools. Brett, thank you so much for your presentation and the time and effort you put into that. It has been most appreciated and it's been great to see the discussion that's been happening since then. We'll see you another time. We'll see you later in the show. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Now, the Adobe Education Evangelist for Europe is leading a special Adobe Climate Change Challenge Activity for students. Tim recently caught up with Dom for this interview. Let's find that interview. <laughs> so many things happening here. Oh, that's right. It was a um, such a long interview. We ended up doing it uh, as a separate stream. So.
for the Here it comes. Oh, it's coming now. For those who haven't met you there before, what is your Let's role? Let's take it back to the start. Dom, Dom Trainer, all the way from London. Thank you so much for joining us for this pre-recorded interview. It's great to see you, mate. How are you? Yeah, very well, thanks. How are you? Very well. Hey, all the better for chatting with you. Dom, tell us, for those who haven't met you before, what is your role at Adobe? Yeah, so my role is quite similar to yours, I would imagine. So, you know, a lot of teacher training. I'm the Adobe Education Evangelist over here in Europe and also Middle East and Africa. And my job is to, you know, train teachers, put together content, come up with partnerships with schools and how we can, you know, bring Adobe tools into school and match up that traditional learning with the digital skills as well. Yeah, it's, a, it's such a great job. And you do an amazing job because I've heard so many great things about the work that you're doing. And I've been involved in some of the work that you've been doing. And you've been creating a number of outstanding Adobe in education adoption programs over the years with a reach of literally thousands of students and teachers around Europe. One of your current programs at the moment is called the Climate Change Challenge. Very topical at the moment with the United Nations Climate Change Conference coming up in Glasgow, Scotland on the 31st of October, just from memory. I yeah, think I, think it's, I, think, I think it's sort of, there's a bit of a preamble at the end of October and then it kicks off in force right on that 1st of November. And we are really hoping that our Prime Minister will be there to represent Australia at the highest level. In fact, it was Prince Charles just this week who kind of hinted that he should be there and I think that may have got him across the line. So thank you, Prince Charles. <laughs> oh, well, at least he did something. That's great. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Now, Dom, tell us a bit more about the Climate Change Challenge. Of course, yeah. Well, I mean, you were talking about the Adobe Adoption programs that we've been involved with, and obviously one of our most successful was the Writing for Change Challenge, which we also did with you. So, you know, that was a really big boost for us. And we've kind of taken that to the next level. And like you say, we've got this Climate uh, Change Conference coming up. So if I just share my screen and then I can talk you through it. Go for it. Cool. So it's the COP26 Climate Change Challenge, and it's using Adobe Spark page and Adobe Spark video. So let's have a sort of a little think about what exactly is COP26. Well, it's the uh, it's the 26th Climate Change Conference from the United Nations being held in Scotland from the 1st to the 12th. Uh, like Tim mentioned, there is some stuff beforehand. I think there's um, things like um, New York City are doing a really big thing at the end of October in the lead up to this. And it's also being supported by Italy, funnily enough. Uh, but sort of during September and October, we're encouraging schools to take on a series of writing challenges and needs to think about solutions, you know, big and small that can reduce climate change. And we use, we're going to use Spark Page or Spark Video to bring that writing to life. So what does it exactly look like? Well, we've got um, lots of different writing challenges with short videos for context and then prompt questions, which can get your students writing. We've also got a couple of tutorials here. Here you can see a Spark page tutorial. If you need any help with putting together your Spark page from uh, the words that you write from these challenges, there's one there. And there's also here for uh, Spark video as well. Both about five minutes long, very easy. You can share those with students as well. But if we go through the different challenges themselves, we've got things like, you know, let's start from the very start. What is, what is the climate crisis? Should public transport be free? I, I mean, that one's a really interesting one. I used to do a lot of work in Luxembourg and actually they made their public transport free and it was brilliant. It really took off. Uh, should we be planting more trees? You know, lots of people talk about that all the time. Is it as uh, is it the kind of uh, the 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 one stop shop for, you know, the big solution for everything? Maybe not. Uh, convincing drivers to get out of the car and use public transportation. That's a big challenge. Uh, renewable energy sources, you know, I mean, we are using more energy than ever. You know, should we be reducing that or should we be finding sort of renewable ways to do that? It's a kind of an interesting balance. Veganism, that's a very divisive topic. Should international flights be banned? And could we end plastic production entirely? This is something that not a lot of people know is that actually plastic pollution, that's a huge, um, you know, has a huge effect on the climate. Uh, you know, it actually is plastic is a sequester of carbon. And it will also heat up the water because it will trap the sun's energy when it goes into the water. So the more plastic in the water, the higher the temperature of the seas. And then car-free cities. This is another really interesting one. Should we ban 
cars from city centers entirely. They've done it in different places in Italy and Spain, for example, being very successful, but obviously requires a big shift in thinking. So, you know, you can choose from any of these, you know, say like we were going to choose the uh, should international flights be banned challenge. You click the button here. I mean, you can have a little preview of the video if you want to and check it out and see if it's got kind of the kind of things that you want to you want to tackle in the classroom. But when you're happy with the one you want, you press check out the challenge and each one of these challenge challenges open up. It opens up in its own page. And from here, you've got that um, you've got that kind of stimulus video in case your students or yourself you know don't understand you know a lot about this topic that will fill you in and all the holes there's a writing template which you can open up and use as well send that out to your students you can just download it or make a copy and then you go into these four questions so for example here where in the world would you like to go on holiday and why uh, should international flights be banned for all but essential travel what is essential travel there's a definition in itself that needs to be made uh, would you be willing to travel to and from your destination by land or sea to reduce air travel? For example, if you wanted to go on holiday to Bali, I know that's a big destination for Aussies. You know, would you be prepared to take the boat? Well, I mean, it might take a few days. Who knows? So it's big questions here. And then the last one, if you went on holiday in your own country without taking a plane, where would you go and why? So, for example, if I was in Victoria, for example, I might fancy going to Phillip Island. I spent a month on Phillip Island. I don't know if you know that, Tim. But anyway, there you go. That's how you take on the challenge. And then you would create your own. You would take your kind of uh, words that you would create, for example. So here's an example of a, uh, of a, of a document which somebody created from, one of the, from the air travel challenge. And then it's about taking this and putting it into a Spark page or a Spark video so that you can share with people. You can get your message out about climate change and you can put pressure on those political leaders like the Australian Prime Minister, like the UK Prime Minister, to get them to actually do something about climate change. So that's how the climate change challenge works. Tim, any other questions at all? Well, look, I'm just so impressed with the work that you do. And this is one of many challenges that you provided for students and teachers in the time that I've known you. bit.ly slash spark climate is where you go. You can see it down the bottom there. Dom, thank you so much for your time and for spending some time with us on Inject Creativity Live. And we want to encourage as many teachers and students to get involved in this challenge as possible. Any last minute words from you? No, absolutely go for it. Let's get students raising their voices and putting pressure on people so we can actually do something about this climate challenge that we've got. Thanks for your time, Dom. See you no next time. time at all. See you next time. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Oh, I don't know what happened there. Hey, look, we have over 30,000 teachers who have enrolled in at least level one of the Adobe Creative Educator program. Please do promote this program with your colleagues via adobe.ly slash ACE. The focus is not on Adobe skills, but understanding the importance of creativity in education. If you would like to be guided through Level 1, Dr Kitchen is running the next Be a Creative Educator course on Tuesday, the 16th of November, 4 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Australian, Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Look up adobe.ly forward slash creative educator for more information and share this site with your colleagues and wider education networks. Hi, folks. Well, it's now time to welcome our education thought leader for their five-minute gem to inspire us and make us think more deeply about the importance of our role as educators. Let's welcome our education thought leader for this episode, Michelle Dennis, Head of Digital at Halebury. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you so much for having me. Over to you. Um, I really... I'm passionate about getting girls into technology. This is one of those things that um, is something very personal to me because I um, went and studied computer science at university and when I arrived there, I looked around and I realised that I felt very unusual, that in fact um, I was one of only a handful who was studying it in um, each classroom. Most tutorials I would be one of um, either the only or one of only a handful of girls. Um, and that's a 
really worrying thing for me. So today I wanted to talk about um, firstly the um, what the problem is or what kind of things we can find out about um, how women and girls are engaged in the tech industry, um, why we should care about it, and then finally what we can, um, how we can change this in our classrooms. But before I go too much further, I do want to point it out that everyone is different. So don't forget that I Sometimes I'll say girls typically do this or um, they respond well to this. Every girl is different. Some girls will be really into some things and not into others. Um, I might make some generalisations, but it really is important to recognise that just um, when we talk about big issues like this, that we don't speak about every individual. What we're doing is talking on a bigger scale. So when I went to uni, um, I saw something very similar to this. So this is uh, part of a government report looking into equity in um, STEM uh, between um, males and females or um, female identifying. Um, and you can see that this is, um, in this report, it shows that 79% uh, of the people who are um, working in the tech industry, and this is all aspects of the tech industry, 79% um, are male, 21% are female. And um, I really shouldn't, I feel I probably shouldn't talk about it in such binary terms, but um, in this instance, uh, it does show you that, um, that women typically tend to be underrepresented when it comes to the technology uh, area. And when we look at the classroom, we're also seeing that um, when you look at male teachers versus female teachers, they're not confident necessarily teaching it within the classroom either. So um, in the primary classroom, 100%, I find this a very strange statistic, but 100% of um, those who identified as male teachers said that they were confident teaching tech in the classroom, 65% of female teachers. And so in the secondary school, again, you see that difference in how male and female teachers feel about um, teaching technology in the classroom. And this comes out into what they also thought that their children, the students, should actually be doing. So 40% felt that boys were more confident in the classroom and only 3% believed that girls were more confident. Um, this perception of confidence and ability um, when it comes to tech, that kind of natural um, way that uh, either boys or girls are um, extends to parents as well and that's really important parents are one of those main things that determine what kind of career that you want to go into so um they found that both teachers and we're talking about not just normal teachers but career advisors and also parents thought that um boys were more suited towards careers in technology now, why does it matter? One of the things that you sometimes see thrown around is this idea that, you know, well, it's just that girls just don't like it or they're just not as good at it or something like that. It actually does matter. Firstly, it matters because um, technology is changing the way that we interact and the way we work. And the people who design it are making decisions which change the way that we do those things. So they are, in fact, setting the pace for society in many, many ways. And if women are part of that industry and not represented in that designing process, then their needs can be left behind and their voices, which are really important, um, won't be represented. Um, it's important from an overall productivity point of view. The reason the government really needs to care about it is that women make up 52%, um, I think it is, of the population, a large part of our productivity. And if we're not enabling that percentage to live up to their um, full potential, um, then uh, we're really laying ourselves down as a country. And finally, um, we know that STEM careers are growing. We know that it's going to be a huge part of this ongoing economy that we're moving into. And so it also will likely be where the money is. So again, we'll see that differentiation between the amount of money earned by different genders, which is a concern. It does lead to inequity in other ways. So the main things in the classroom to think about is how, firstly, you present technology in the classroom. So there were some interesting studies that showed that um, men were more likely 
uh, to um, or, or boys were more likely to see technology as a toy and enjoy studying it just for the sake of studying technology and that girls sometimes saw it as a tool which meant that they really didn't mind learning it. They loved learning it, but learning it to solve a problem or to fix something. And so tool versus toy is really, really important um, uh, way of thinking about how you're presenting technology use in your classroom. You're going to find perhaps that some girls will respond a lot better to the same skills if you're teaching it to solve a problem or to um, do something with it rather than just let's play with the tech and learn it because it's tech. Um, so they just need that reason that is important. Um, the way you structure your classroom is also very, very important. So um, typically studies have shown that many um, girls don't respond as well, not all girls, but some girls don't respond as well to the competitive classroom where it's pitting one person versus another. But they really do respond well to collaborative approaches to education. So group projects and that kind of classroom where you bounce ideas off each other, each other and you solve problems together. Um, they also like creative and storytelling methodologies far more than the competitive as well. So giving them a problem to solve or um, a story to tell really does engage them. It's why I use problem-based learning so much in the classroom because I can see like you don't have to think of yourself as good at tech to use it to solve a problem. You're overcoming that kind of predetermined, um, uh, self-determined prophecy that way. Finally, because um, I've only got five minutes and I could talk for hours about this, it's such a, in, it is actually quite a complex area. One of the things I want to talk about as well is creating a self and waking, welcoming space for women. Now, I know that um, there are many women gamers and they are absolutely awesome. Um, there is, however, when you look at the studies, there are more comments which are negative towards women. There have been some great studies where they actually used AI to analyse um, the feedback that two different users were getting based on if they had a male voice or a female voice. And the female voice got far more aggressive comments than the male voice. Um, so creating a culture where women feel safe to take part of it, like they're not being um, like that it is a welcoming place, um, but also that they don't feel other. And so that's where things like girls clubs at lunchtime to give them the computer rooms so that they can actually um, have some time where they feel like they own the space and it's a place that they too have equal sway over. That can be really, really important. There have been some really interesting studies that showed even things that um, when a, a girl was solving a problem using a mouse, that the teacher both male and female teachers were more likely to take the mouse away from the girl and solve the problem for them and were more likely to talk a boy through it and encourage them to solve it themselves. So the way we treat them in the classroom, the way we make sure that they feel like they're welcomed, that they are empowered, that makes a huge, huge difference as well. Um, and that goes beyond just the classroom, obviously, as well. That goes into our workplaces. Finally, um, you can't be what you can't see. When you are underrepresented, it can turn into a little bit of a, um, a cycle. You don't see people do it, so you think you can't do it, which means the next generation also thinks, well, that's not something girls do. And the fact is that girls absolutely are needed in the tech industry. Um, we can bring skills that um, are very much in need, particularly in um, leadership um, roles. Um, girls absolutely can understand uh, complex uh, technological issues. I mean, I studied software um, development. It's it's something that um, uh, girls can be a part of, but we do need to see it to uh, make sure that that message goes on. So there's some great groups that encourage that. Michelle, thank you so much for your time and your inspiration, your messages. You've generated quite an interesting discussion there in the chat and we're looking forward to hearing from you in our fireside chat in a few minutes' time so that we can have a bit more of a conversation without the formality of being recorded. Michelle, thank you so much for your contribution tonight. Thank you so much, Tim.
You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Thanks, Rob. We have a couple of special announcements for New South Wales and Victorian teachers about some opportunities for students in 2022. Throughout 2022, Adobe is running a series of Adobe Creativity Challenges for New South Wales and Victorian students in years five to nine. Adobe Creativity Challenges are all about students working with a team to design and share a digital solution based on a brief from an organisation or a global problem. Find out more via adobe.ly forward slash challenges year five to nine. The digital solutions are made with Adobe's amazing creativity tools and are usually a short video a mobile app design or a web page. This is a great way for students to learn Adobe tools and develop a range of important collaboration, digital literacy, communication, problem solving and creativity skills. Victorian and New South Wales students in years 9 to 12, as well as teachers, and we're opening this up to any teacher from any region, are invited to register for a special two and a half day, that's right, two and a half day Adobe Premiere Pro workshop during the Easter holidays. This is a great opportunity to spend quality time learning a great industry standard application. This is a free and online workshop intensive that will also involve a showcase and the chance for three lucky students, not teachers, but students, to win one of two iPads and Apple pencils, as well as a pocket gimbal camera. Look up adobe.ly forward slash video dash workshop 22 to find out more about the Adobe Holiday Video Challenge Workshop, which is being run by Dr. Tim Kitchen from Adobe and will be held from April 11 to 14 during the Easter holidays. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Before we finish this episode of Inject Creativity Live, let's have a look at the recently released October edition of the Australasian Adobe in Education update. This monthly publication is available via timkitchen.net and is packed with great resources and inspiration from the Adobe education team. So I'm just going live now onto timkitchen.net and you can see that we've talked about the Teach Meet program, a recent student creativity challenge in Queensland that we did with QUT, some brand new research that has just come out of the United States. And I'm gonna bring Juliet up onto the screen as well mm -hmm. too. And uh, this is fantastic. We're, we're actually gonna bring Tacey to, Tacey Trowbridge who led this research from Adobe. She's gonna be on the next episode we're about to introduce announce her for the next episode and she'll talk about this research it's fascinating what's come out of uh, that you can get a head start on that by looking at it and uh, the opportunities that we just mentioned are in the newsletter as well including the holiday video challenge and last episode of inject creativity live is there this episode will probably be on the next newsletter or at least a link to it and lots of other things. I'm just going to quickly skip through because right at the end, there's a bunch of practical lesson plans, ideas for teachers using a range of our tools that come from the Adobe Education Exchange. Now, Juliet, I don't think any of your products are actually promoted in this newsletter, but you, you've contributed lots to the Education Exchange. Why should teachers get involved in the Education Exchange? I think one of the most wonderful things is that you have this, one, this, this incredible group of people, educators from all around the world, with specific um, areas of expertise. But the thing I like most of all, I think, is that you can find strategies and you have all of the scaffolding that's there. You have tutorials that are there. And if you go outside of your own subject areas and look at what other people are doing, the number of times you can pick something up that you can adapt all you're doing is changing the content, but you've got the strategy. You're giving students the opportunity to express themselves and demonstrate their understanding very effectively. And the other thing I think that's particularly good for the education exchange is you can actually develop your own micro-credentials in terms of your own expertise in different areas. And as a teacher, you can go in and get tutorials, but you're working with a group of people who are like-minded but it's a global connection and if you want to do global mm. projects which is an area i'm really interested in it means i've got access to people around the world that i can call upon or draw upon and the relationships you make 
with this network of like-minded educators is really very special. Um, and, you know, I, I've contributed quite a number of different resources, but I did a project last year with um, uh, Better Lessons and we create and Khan Academy and Pixar in a Box. There are lots of things that are going on and the um, ability to share the materials, but work with very well produced, very professional tools um, and, and projects is, is priceless. Thanks, Juliet. Now, if you don't get the monthly update, the newsletter once a month, uh, then you can opt in via bit.ly slash adobe underscore contact. This is a great way to keep in touch with the world of Adobe in education, and please do share all relevant content with your colleagues and wider education networks. And if you're on Facebook, Jerry, let's get the Facebook promo happening here on the slide. And if you're not already a member of the Australasian Adobe Education Community Facebook group, please join via facebook.com slash groups slash A-U-S-A-E-L. This is a great way to keep regularly involved with Adobe in education and the wider community. Our next Inject Creativity Live event will be on Wednesday, the 3rd of November at 6.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time. Our AEL presenter will be Adobe Education Leaders and Eden Carey from Perth. And our thought leader will be Steve Colbert from Melbourne. We will also have a special guest appearance from Pacey Trowbridge from the Adobe's global team in San Francisco, who has the research for us that Tim mentioned earlier. For those watching the recording of this episode, join us live if you can in the future. It's always much more fun and interactive when you are with us live. For those watching live, get ready to move to our bluejeans.com forward slash kitchen dot adobe room for our brief fireside chat. And we will see you all at the next episode. Special thank you to Jerry and Erin for helping to put this show together. And a special thank you to Juliet, Brett and Michelle for their contributions to this episode. See you all next time. Bye bye. Well, folks, thank you so much for watching this episode of Inject Creativity Live. For those who are watching live, join us via bluejeans.com slash kitchen.adobe for an informal, non-recorded fireside chat to meet and interact with our presenters, as well as complete the feedback form and apply for a professional development certificate. If you are not watching this live, join us live next time. Use this QR code or link to find out more about dates and topics. On behalf of Dr. Kitchen and Erin Rathke, don't forget to keep being creative.